Hello everyone! Welcome to this installment of our Forces of Nature Summer Camp, another online video. My name is Rachel and I am the Education Assistant at Madison Audubon this summer. I'm so excited to be here and I've loved being a part of summer camp. I am so excited that today we are going to be learning about herp tiles. Herp tiles is kind of a silly way of saying reptiles and amphibians. Sometimes we like to group them together and talk about them as one group because they can be seen as similar creatures. This week of summer camp, you might have guessed it, is all about herp tiles. We're learning about snakes and lizards and turtles, frogs, toads, and salamanders, and more. All of our activities are free and they're online. You can find them on the Madison Audubon website. I would love to hear from all of you today. If you're listening, say hello, let me know. If you have had any herptile sightings this summer, I'll be checking the comments throughout to see what all of you have to say. I think that my favorite herptile sightings this summer have been tiny baby turtles. I've seen a baby snapping turtle and a baby painted turtle and some gray and green tree frogs. I am still hoping that I'll see a snake sometime this summer. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about endangered species. You may have heard that term thrown around when people are talking about tigers and elephants or rhinos and pandas but it's not just large mammals that are threatened. There are lots of reptiles and amphibians that are in danger of going extinct. So I'm gonna start off today with a little bit of vocabulary just so that you know what some of the different words mean when it comes to endangered species. So the first word is extinct. An extinct means that there are no more living members of a group of animals left on earth. For example, you probably think of dinosaurs, or you could think of dodo birds. So here's a picture of a dodo bird. Dodo birds are extinct. There aren't any of them left on earth. The next word is endangered, and endangered means that, these, that the animals in the group are in danger of going extinct. So it kind of makes sense with its name. They're endangered. They're endangered and they're in danger of going extinct in either one place where they live or everywhere where they live, unless something happens to stop it. An example of an endangered species is this blind salamander. As you can see, it has no eyes. There are also animals that are threatened and threatened means that they might become endangered. This is the American crocodile, and the American crocodile is an example of a threatened animal species. So it kind of moves in an order from threatened to endangered to extinct, unless things happen that change the course for that animal. Now that we know what some of those labels mean, we're gonna start thinking about why their populations are decreasing. So, I want you to think about why so many animals are having their populations go down. What's going on in different places that's affecting so many different creatures? Let me know in the comments what you think. There are members from all animal groups that we could talk about because there are many animals that are endangered, but since it's herp week, we are going to be taking a closer look at why so many reptiles and amphibians are in danger. Reptiles and amphibians are vulnerable to change in many different ways, 
and our world is changing really, really fast right now. So they're having to deal with different toxins that they're not used to in their environments. There's over collection going on. So for some of these animals, people like to collect them for pets or for other reasons. And so their populations in the wild are going down. Global warming is affecting these creatures. Some of them have new non-native predators. That means that when a species is introduced into an area where it wasn't before, it's preying on these animals that aren't used to having it as a predator, so they don't have very many options for escaping. A lot of their habitat is being destroyed, and so that affects the places left where they are able to live. And finally, there are a lot of diseases that are affecting these animals. We're going to look deeper at a couple of these reasons and think about what we can do to help. All right. To start off, we're going to be doing a little experiment that shows how toxins affect amphibians. Amphibians have a thinner skin in comparison to other animals. Think about the toads and frogs that you've seen. If you've ever had the chance to touch one of them, you'll notice that their skin is always a little bit wet. It's also really thin. So their thin skin allows for them to breathe through their skin. Oxygen can exchange from the air right into the blood on the surface of the skin. That's super cool. It's an efficient way to help them breathe. But since their skin is thin, other things can get in through it easily as well, like toxins or other chemicals in the water. We're going to look at an experiment that shows how amphibian skin is permeable or open to allowing some of these toxins into their body. So here's what I did. I took two hard-boiled eggs. One of them has the shell on, and one of them I peeled the shell. This egg represents a reptile or another type of animal that has thicker skin. Reptiles have scales all over their body, and it serves as a layer of protection. This peeled hard-boiled hard egg is an amphibian. It represents that its skin is very thin, moist, and can allow things to move through it. I put both of these eggs in water. Then I added something to represent toxins in the water. I just added some blue food coloring. I let these animal eggs sit in the food coloring overnight to see what would happen. Are you ready to see what the eggs look like now? Let me show you. This is our reptile egg. As you can see, it did turn a little bit blue. It started out as brown, and now the shell has a lot of blue dye on it. And now for our amphibian egg. It's bright blue. I'll show you the comparison. Here was the, the amphibian before it went into the dye, and here's the amphibian now. It soaked up a lot of toxins. Now we're going to cut open the eggs to see how far the toxins traveled into their bodies. All right, first up is the amphibian. All right, you can see how the dye is all around the outside of that egg. Now we're going to see how well the reptile shell kept out the toxins. If you can hear that, I'm peeling this egg. I'm very curious to see 
how much blue got inside this hard-boiled egg. All right, it's looking like there's a little bit of dye that got through the shell. Okay, almost there. Here's our reptile. I'm gonna move my camera to get it out of the sun. All right, it looks like there are some blue spots on it where the dye got through the shell. Let's cut it open. Look, there's almost no dye on the outside of the egg. Let's compare that to the amphibian. This one's the amphibian and this one is the reptile. So amphibians are in danger when even small amounts of toxins get into their water because the toxins can travel through the water, through their skin, and into their bodies. That's one of the reasons why we work so hard to keep our water and our air clean. Amphibians and aquatic reptiles rely on wetland habitats. They need both that space and they need clean water in order to survive. So that's why we try and keep our water clean so that we can help amphibians and reptiles live and reproduce in these wetland areas. Okay, now we're gonna move on to reptiles. Again, there are many different things affecting the lives of reptiles, but we're gonna talk about their habitat. Something that affects the habitat of reptile species is called habitat fragmentation. I think that these pictures illustrate what habitat fragmentation might mean. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Mm, do you see this next guy or gal? This one is one of my favorite looking reptiles. It reminds me of the dinosaurs. And finally, uh-oh, you might have guessed it. Habitat fragmentation can be seen in the roads that are all over our country. And if you notice, those were all turtles trying to cross the road. Turtles have been especially hard hit by cars because they're slow moving animals. They've been around since before dinosaurs. But the strategy that they've used to stay alive is often to hide in their shell and just wait it out. This doesn't work when you're, when you're facing things like cars. Turtles have to cross roads for very specific reasons and it happens all the time and every year. They're moving between wetland habitats. The females are going to lay their eggs in specific nesting locations and the little baby turtles have to crawl and walk other places to find that water where they're gonna end up spending most of their lives. People have been thinking about how to work around roads and they've come up with some cool ideas to make it easier for animals to cross between different pieces of their habitat. Here's one example. In this example, they decided to build a stretch of land over the road in order to give animals a way to safely cross. In this next example, they made a tunnel under the road so that animals would have the option of safely crossing. Here are a few ways that you can help turtles. If you can, you could just watch them and make sure that they cross the roads carefully. If you feel like you do have to touch them, make sure that you handle them as little as possible and that you're being really gentle. Remember, some species of turtle do bite. So the best way to handle a snapping turtle and other turtles that can bite 
is to hold it by the back of its shell and sort of help it scoot across the road. Remember to always move a turtle in the direction that it's already traveling. So habitat can be fragmented or split into smaller pieces from roads or from a lot of different a lot of different elements of of human life. So we have to think about different ways that we can help animals stay connected to their habitat in order to help them survive. I know that for me, it can be hard to think about all the reptiles and amphibians that are endangered or threatened out in the world, and even here in Wisconsin. But remember that our little actions can make a big difference. Here in Wisconsin, we have lots of reptile and amphibian species, and they're depending on us to keep our water clean and to keep their habitat connected. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I hope you all get to see some awesome herps by the end of the summer. If you have any questions about our summer camp, about herps, or anything else, feel free to reach out to Madison Audubon on Facebook or email. We love hearing from all of you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.